in one body. Unity in the Holy Spirit, the body of Messiah and the Joshua of today. Second Passover 2014 Unity in Christ is a rather broad topic, with a considerable breadth of counsel from the pen of inspiration. Though essential to the spiritual life and well-being of the Church, both anciently and today, unity is an elusive goal unless we all work together in right lines. This presentation makes no effort to address this topic in its fullness, or to belabor the topic, but rather to address the particular need here, to direct our focus to the only one who can bring unity in the body. Furthermore, there is no desire or thought on the part of the author-editor here to sound authoritative, but rather a sincere desire to open a convocation of study and prayer to find the truth, recognizing and respecting the minds of all others, and the gifts given to each individual. What I am attempting to communicate here is that unity requires the body, and moreover, the gifts given to the body. There is today a great need to break new ground on this critical topic of unity in the branch, in an expanded understanding of this truth, supported by scripture and spirit of prophecy, so that we may understand the generally misunderstood topic of the Joshua of today. It is the belief of the author-editor here that the Joshua of today is the ministration which brings the cleansing of sanctification in the body of Messiah, in the closing up of the atonement, and the change in garment, Zechariah. 3. For the Waveshi of company in its proper order. But first, we must determine just who gets this garment change first. Over the last few years, it has become more and more evident to a few of us that a spiritual logical disconnect has been long thought and promulgated in the ranks of those who believe in advanced truth in the branch, typically by those who seek the highest position as the highest official in the church. As in the first century church, unity today must be brought about, brought to complete fruition, only through and evidenced in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, in the body. This study is not a call to unity, but rather a presentation to agitate minds to search out the full truth on this topic, through scripture and inspired counsel, and the direct leading of the Holy Spirit in each individual and hopefully come to a general agreement, the witness of the Spirit. The aim here is to humble in the dust the glory of man, and thereby emphasize the working and power of the Holy Spirit in the body. Truth has a certain ring to it. To those who love the truth, growing in the grace and knowledge of the fullness of the Godhead bodily, of the Son and the Daughter, will see that the body of Christ today already possesses some of the gifts of the Spirit to operate, to come together, to begin to act like a body. It is the Holy Spirit that dispenses these needed gifts to the body, to her body, not dispensed through a man, but given liberally to those who ask. Just ask. The Holy Spirit alone possesses the wisdom to dispense the right gift to the petitioner at the right time. To the outpouring of the Spirit in the wilderness. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 12 verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. 12 verse 2, Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. 12 verse 3, Wherefore I give you to understand, that no man speaking by the Spirit of Elohim calleth Yahshua. Accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. 12 verse 4, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. 12 verse 5, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. 12 verse 6, and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same Elohim which worketh all in all. 12 verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. 12 verse 8, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. 12 verse 9, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. 12 verse 10, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, 
to another diver kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Verse 11, But all these work at that one and the selfsame Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Verse 12, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also, is, Christ. Verse 13, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether, we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. 12 verse 14, 12 verse 15, 12 verse 16, 12 verse 17. For the body is not one member, but many dot if the foot say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were, an eye where, the hearing? If the whole were hearing where, the smelling? 12 verse 18, verse 19, 20, 21, need of you. Verse 22, much more those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary, verse 23. And those, members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. But now hath God set the members every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where, were the body but now, are they many members, yet, but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. 12 verse 24. For our comely parts have no need. But Elohim hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. 12 verse 25 That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. 12 verse 26 And whether one member suffers, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Verse 27 now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. Verse 28 And Elohim hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. 12. Verse 29 Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? 12 verse 30, Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? 12 verse 31, But covet earnestly the best gifts. And yet show I unto you a more excellent way. E. White stated that. Oh, how sad it is that men allow themselves to be so wrought upon by the enemy, that they dare venture to exalt their finite judgment in opposition to God's plans and purposes. Man's authority bears the signature of man. We are not to permit the rank and file of our people to come under the generalship of the weak, confused sentiments of man. God's authority is to stand supreme. And I must call upon his people to recognize his authority, which bears the evidence of its divine origin. Every believer is called upon to unite inseparably with God's authority. The foundation on which the truth has always been based is sure, and upon this foundation, all are to stand who are doing the Lord's work. God's Word reveals His design, and that work only which is carried on by the principles of the Word will stand fast forever, approved both by the heavenly host and the adopted family living on the earth, during the remnant of time remaining before the close of this earth's history. Finite man yielding to Satan's devising, can easily lose sight of the Lord's purpose concerning him, for by yielding to temptation man loses his power of discernment. Every Christian is to strive to be a laborer together with God. Christ calls for service altogether different from that which is given him. Men in positions of responsibility should, through the power of the Holy Spirit, 
reveal the Redeemer much more clearly to the world than they have revealed him. The infinite God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son as a sacrifice for us, so that, receiving him by faith and practicing his virtues, we should not perish, but have everlasting life. My brethren, how do you suppose he regards the great lack of spiritual enthusiasm manifested over the record of the great sacrificial offering made for our individual salvation? All human ambition, all boasting, is to be laid in the dust. Self, sinful self, is to be abased, not exalted. By holiness to God in daily life here below, we are to manifest the Christ life. The corrupt nature is to become pure and undefiled, subdued, not exalted. We are to be humble, faithful men and women. Never are we to sit upon the judgment seat. God demands that his representatives shall be pure vessels, revealing the beauty of sanctified character. So long as we work in Christ's lines, laying hold of the arm of the Mighty One, we are safe, but just as soon as we loosen our grasp of His arm, and begin to depend upon human beings, we are in great danger. This very day, the Lord desires us to reach a higher standard than we have ever reached in the past. Day by day, we are to advance upward, ever upward, until it can be said of us as a people, ye are complete in Him. Unity. The work of God is advanced more rapidly when His workers are in unity. In unity there is a life, a power, that can be obtained in no other way. United with one another, working together in harmony, we shall indeed be laborers together with God. Yes, one says, this is exactly what I believe in consolidation. But this unity is not what the world calls consolidation. Unity among brethren results in consolidation with Christ and with the heavenly angels. Such consolidation is heaven-born. It is that for which Christ longed when he prayed, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them, as thou hast loved me, John 17 verse 20 to 23. The Very First Principle our connection to the divine source the Holy Spirit the very source of life within the body of Messiah we are one spiritual body with our Father through our Divine Mother. Ephesians 5 verse 30 For we are members of His body, of His flesh, and of His bones. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 15 Know ye, not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ, and make them the members of an harlot? L. God, forbid. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 16 What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 17 But he that is joined unto the Lord, is one spirit. We should see this in reference to the cleansing garment change of Zechariah 3. Romans 12 verse 4 For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. Romans 12 verse 5 So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Romans 12 verse 6 Having then gifted differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophecy according to the proportion of faith. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 18 But now hath, L, set the members every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 19, And if they were all one member, where were the body? 1 Corinthians 12 verse 20, But now are they many members, yet but one body. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 16 The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break is it not the communion of the body of Christ? 1 Corinthians 10 verse 17 For we being many are one bread, and one body. 
for we are all partakers of that one bread. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 27 Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 28 And L. hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. We are one body in Christ what it means. When the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the early church, the whole multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul. The Spirit of Christ made them one. This is the fruit of abiding in Christ. Christ is represented as dwelling by His Spirit in His people, and believers is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ Himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together, groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, Paul says, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bonds of peace. There is one body, and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. Those who sincerely desire truth will not be reluctant to lay open their positions for investigation and criticism, and will not be annoyed if their opinions and ideas are crossed. This was the spirit cherished among us forty years ago. We would come together burdened in soul, praying that we might be one in faith and doctrine, for we knew that Christ is not divided. One point at a time was made the subject of investigation. Solemnity characterized these councils of investigation. The scriptures were opened with a sense of awe. Often we fasted, that we might be better fitted to understand the truth. After earnest prayer, if any point was not understood, it was discussed, and each one expressed his opinion freely, then we would again bow in prayer, and earnest supplications went up to heaven that God would help us to see eye to eye, that we might be one, as Christ and the Father are one. Many tears were shed. If one brother rebuked another for his dullness of comprehension and not understanding a passage as he understood it, the one rebuked would afterward take his brother by the hand, and say, let us not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Jesus is with us, let us keep a humble and teachable spirit, and the brother addressed would say, Forgive me, brother, I have done you an injustice. Then we would bow down in another season of prayer. We spent many hours in this way. We did not generally study together more than four hours at a time, yet sometimes the entire night was spent in solemn investigation of the scriptures, that we might understand the truth for our time. On some occasions the Spirit of God would come upon me, and difficult portions were made clear through God's appointed way, and then there was perfect harmony. We were all of one mind and one spirit. Let none be self-confident, as though God had given them special light above their brethren. Christ is represented as dwelling in His people and believers, as built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building, fitly framed together, groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, says Paul, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. To every one is given a gift. Unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Ephesians 4 verse 7
The talents that Christ entrusts to his church represent especially the gifts and blessings imparted by the Holy Spirit. To one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these work at that one and the selfsame Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. All men do not receive the same gifts, but to every servant of the Master, some gift of the Spirit is promised. Before he left his disciples, Christ breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Again he said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Unto every one of us is given grace, according to the measure of the gift of Christ, the Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. The gifts are already ours in Christ, but their actual possession depends upon our reception of the Spirit of God. God does not ask us to do in our own strength the work before us. He has provided divine assistance for all the emergencies to which our human resources are unequal. He gives the Holy Spirit to help in every strait, to strengthen our hope and assurance, to illuminate our minds and purify our hearts. There is no limit to the usefulness of the one who, putting self aside, makes room for the working of the Holy Spirit upon his heart, and lives a life wholly consecrated to God. Christ declared that the divine influence of the Spirit was to be with his followers unto the end. For the perfecting of the saints. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Ephesians 4 verse 11 to 13. All these gifts are to be an exercise. Every faithful worker will minister for the perfecting of the saints. There is something for everyone to do. Every soul that believes the truth is to stand in his lot and place, saying, Here am I, send me. Give each one something to do for others. Help all to see that as receivers of the grace of Christ, they are under obligation to work for him. And let all be taught how to work. Especially should those who are newly come to the faith be educated to become laborers together with God. If set to work, the despondent will soon forget their despondency, the weak will become strong, the ignorant intelligent, and all will be prepared to present the truth as it is in Jesus. They will find an unfailing helper in him who has promised to save all that come unto him. The influence of the Holy Spirit is needed that the work may be properly balanced, and that it may move forward solidly in every line. The truth for this time embraces the whole gospel. Rightly presented, it will work in man the very changes that will make evident the power of God's grace upon the heart. It will do a complete work and develop a complete man. He, God tells us to be perfect as he is in the same manner. We are to be centers of light and blessing to our little circle, even as he is to the universe. We have nothing of ourselves, but the light of his love shines upon us, and we are to reflect its brightness. We may be perfect in our sphere, even as God is perfect in his. For the Unity of the Saints I beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Ephesians 4 verse 1 to 3. The stars of heaven are all under law, each influencing the other to do the will of God, yielding their common obedience to the law that controls their action. And, so that the Lord's work may advance healthfully and solidly, His people must draw together. The spasmodic fitful movements of some who claim to be Christians, 
are well represented by the work of strong but untrained horses. When one pulls forward, another pulls back, and at the voice of their master, one plunges ahead, and the other stands immovable. If men do not move in concert in the great and grand work for this time, there will be confusion. If men wear the yoke of Christ, they cannot pull apart, they will draw with Christ. To the prophet, the wheel within a wheel, the appearance of living creatures connected with them, all seemed intricate and unexplainable. But the hand of infinite wisdom is seen among the wheels, and perfect order is the result of its work. Every wheel, directed by the hand of God, works in perfect harmony with every other wheel. By the influence of the Spirit, the most discordant may be brought into harmony. Unselfishness is to bind God's people together with a firm, tender bonds. There is vast power in the Church when the energies of the members are under the control of the Spirit, gathering good from every source, educating, training, and disciplining self. Thus is presented to God a powerful organization, through which He can work for the conversion of sinners. Thus heaven and earth are connected, and all divine agencies cooperate with human instrumentalities. November 12, 1908 Till we all come to the unity of the faith, Mrs. E. G. White. Paul, urging the Ephesians to preserve unity and love, writes, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. Unity must precede the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Notice that it was after the disciples had come into perfect unity when they were no longer striving for the highest place, that the Spirit was poured out. They were of one accord. All differences had been put away. And the testimony born of them after the Spirit had been given is the same. Mark the word. The multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul. Acts 4, verse 32. The Spirit of Him who died that sinners might live animated the entire congregation of believers. To begin acting like a body the body of Christ. By, being united as children of God. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Galatians 3, verse 26. We seldom find two persons exactly alike. Among human beings as well as among the things of the natural world, there is diversity. Unity and diversity among God's children the manifestation of love and forbearance in spite of the difference of disposition, this is the testimony that God sent His Son into the world to save sinners. The unity that exists between Christ and His disciples does not destroy the personality of either. In mind, in purpose, in character, they are one but not in person. By partaking of the Spirit of God, conforming to the law of God, man becomes a partaker of the divine nature. Christ brings his disciples into a living union with himself and with the Father. Through the working of the Holy Spirit upon the human mind, man is made complete in Christ Jesus. Unity with Christ establishes a bond of unity with one another. This unity is the most convincing proof to the world of the majesty and virtue of Christ, and of his power to take away sin. The powers of darkness stand a poor chance against believers who love one another as Christ has loved them, who refuse to create alienation and strife, who stand together, who are kind, courteous, and tender-hearted, cherishing the faith that works by love and purifies the soul. We must have the Spirit of Christ, or we are none of His.